Lang Wang Peng is on the move, but is taking life a step at a time. Four years ago, the former cargo handler had heart failure and was on the brink of death. An artificial heart pump saved his life. When I got the heart pump, I had to stay in the hospital all the time. I couldn't move around because the big battery pack for the pump had to be monitored all the time. Life was very hard. Lao's situation is common for patients fitted with mechanical pumps. Well, the heart pump that patients use today, at the very least, is the size of, say, my fist. That's quite small already, but uh, it's not small enough for you to uh, put it in without open heart surgery. So first problem, you need to have open heart surgery. Number two, because of its large size, you need a lot of uh, electricity. So you need a huge battery pack. Um, now all this works against the patient, uh, his well-being and so on. Dr. Freddy Boy and his team of researchers are taking the problem seriously. Heart disease is the second biggest killer in Singapore, causing one in four deaths. In discussing with uh, heart surgeons, we found out that the, the key problem is the size of the heart pump. Uh, because of its large size and heaviness, it cannot be put inside the human body. But that's all about to change soon, with his team developing the world's smallest heart pump. Have a look at this pump. This is the one they use for heart patients today. It weighs almost a kilo and the size is huge. And what we are doing is to replace this pump with this one uh, done by myself. And it's no more than 50 grams and it's so small, you can actually insert it into your body without open heart surgery. And they say there are other advantages too. The conventional pump is made of titanium, a metal surface that can cause blood clotting. The new device is made of ceramic, meaning it's more compatible with a human body, reducing the risk of clotting and infections. The pump that we have is not like a normal pump. It's what we call a piezoelectric pump. Uh, in effect, you put an uh, electrical signal and the tube, it's just a tube, starts to jiggle. Uh, imagine a, a Chinese dancer going round. Uh, what we have managed to do is make it jiggle so fast that uh, blood can start flowing at a rate that will help the patient. The device is also expected to ease patients' pocketbooks. Researchers say the price for the small pump would be about 20% of the cost of the conventional device. Singapore isn't missing a beat either. The government also hopes to profit from these kinds of cutting-edge technology and turn them into an unconventional investment and tourism attraction. The medical industry here is big business, and the government would like to see it get bigger. As testimony, in late 2003, it established a body to specially promote Singapore as the hub in providing high-end medical technology and treatment in the region. In healthcare, progress means improving and often saving lives. And it's to achieving that sort of progress. And this is how the new government agency, Singapore Medicine, is trying to put the nation the on the map, with commercials and conferences targeting the overseas market. The, region and from around the, globe. the Singapore Tourism Board says more than 200,000 visitors come here annually just for high-end medical treatment, and it wants that number to get bigger. Hospitals are now working with hotels and travel agencies, offering visitors from the Middle East high-end health care packages. And soon, the country will also have its first public port blood bank on offer international and local patients to tap into. What you are banking is the blood in the placenta. And the placenta is really what connects the fetus to the uterus of the mother. After delivery, the placenta is passed out, but it still contains placenta blood. And that thing is unique. And different from adult blood in that it uh, contains high numbers of stem cells. Stem cells can be used to treat life-threatening cancer, blood disease, and immune disorders. And because of some of the oldest people plant, Singapore's public health blood bank is expected to play a crucial role in here. I think our cod blood 
would be available to anyone around the world who needs it. But obviously, we'll be collecting cord bloods uh, with a view to meeting the needs of uh, our Singaporean patients. This means that we have a higher abundance of Chinese and Malay and Indian patients. But nonetheless, when the Malay Chinese and Indian around the world, they also search our cord blood bank, and if we find a match, they are more than welcome to uh, make use of it. The bank, run by the government agency Singapore, hopes to collect at least 1,000 units of cord blood in its first phase of operation this year. Officials admit there is a long way to go before anyone can benefit from the collection. We are able to gradually through the years and with enough funds uh, to expand to a 10,000 uh, sample cord blood bank, then our donors, our, our patients will have a 80% chance of finding it. Is it nice? And if they collect it for the public and it is for saving lives, then you know it's such a simple decision to make. <laughs> Thank you.